Hello, my fellow forgiven sinners. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why? Because Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. These are the three truths that we focused on last time in the story of the scriptures and are, frankly, a good summary of Christianity uh, as a whole. Uh, now, uh, as we start the book of Acts, or the Acts of the Apostles, uh, this book shows us that God did not complete his work with Jesus' death and resurrection. God wanted to spread this good news of repentance and salvation to the ends of the earth, and God is going to do just that through the Holy Spirit working in Christians throughout the world. Today we see the beginnings of the Christian church so that we can better know what it is and what it is doing uh, both back in history and also in our day. Acts begins with uh, the ascension of Jesus. After Jesus' resurrection, he continued to meet with his disciples for about 40 days. Um, for 40 days, and uh, at the end of this, Jesus met with his disciples at the Mount of Olives. He told them to wait in Jerusalem for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The disciples asked if uh, Jesus was now going to restore the kingdom of Israel, but Jesus told them it was not for them to know God's timetable. Instead, uh, they would soon receive power to be Christ's witnesses, starting in Jerusalem and going out to the ends of the earth. As Jesus spoke, he was taken up uh, until a cloud hid him from, the, uh, from sight. There were suddenly two men in white next to the disciples, uh, and they told them that this same Jesus who was taken up into heaven would come back in the same way that he had went, or that he had gone. Um, <clears throat> the disciples returned to Jerusalem, and they spent ten days uh, mostly just praying. Uh, they also chose a replacement for Judas, a man named Matthias, who had been with them for all of Jesus' ministry and who had uh, seen the risen Christ. That tenth day was Pentecost. This was another Jewish festival. It was celebrated 50 days after Passover. At, uh, as Jesus, uh, just like at Jesus' death and resurrection, uh, this major event for the Christian timeline also took place when Jerusalem was crowded with Jews who wanted to celebrate the festival. Uh, the, the disciples were together praying again, uh, like they had been doing for the past ten days, when suddenly there was this sound of a powerful wind. Uh, they saw what looked like flames of fire separate and rest on each of their heads, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and suddenly they were given the ability to speak in different languages, languages that they had never studied or learned for themselves. Uh, they were just enabled to do this. The disciples ended up out in the uh, city streets, and a crowd had gathered around them because they had heard of the disciples speaking in their la native languages. If you've been with us through the story of the scriptures, you'll remember that previously, um, the Jews had been scattered among the nations. Uh, so there were Jews all over the world at this time, uh, and many of the Jews uh, would return to Jerusalem for the festival, uh, for the various festivals uh, of, of the Jewish calendar. But they would not be able to speak their native languages there. They would speak a, a more universal language that everybody else spoke. Uh, but somehow they heard all these uneducated disciples of Jesus able to speak in their native, their home languages uh, where they were telling them or what, where the disciples were telling them the glories of God. Uh, many of them were amazed, but some of them uh, made fun of the disciples. They said that they were too drunk, they had had too much wine. Um, and they probably thought it was ridiculous that a man could be raised from the dead. Well, at this point, Peter stood up to preach. Peter declared that this was not drunkenness. Instead, this was the fulfillment of the prophecy found in Joel chapter 2, which said that God would pour out his Spirit on all people so that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord would be saved. And sure enough, to this day, people all over the world have access to God's word. Before Christ, God gave special revelations only to certain people, but in our day, almost anyone can open up the scriptures and learn God's words. Peter went on to tell the crowd about Jesus, whom they had put to death, but whom God had raised from the dead, declaring him to be both Lord and Messiah. The crowds were terrified uh, by this news, and they asked if uh, they asked what they could do. And Peter replied, "Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit." Peter went on to say, "This uh, promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call." Peter said more in his sermon, uh, and we hear that uh, after Peter preached here, three thousand joined their number that day. Next, we get a summary of what the early Christians did. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. 
And this is really a good blueprint for Christian churches, uh, Christian congregations today. We ought to gather together in order to give ourselves fully to what the apostles taught. That's what we find in the Bible. Uh, So Bible study. Uh, We should be gathering to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Uh, We should be gathering together uh, with our fellow Christians, getting to know each other, growing together uh, as we grow in the word together. Uh, So growing closer to one another. Uh, And prayer, finally. Uh, So if Christians are not doing these things, we really should seriously question if we really are Christian, (laughs) right? Uh, If if we're not following what the Bible says, what the early church established for us to do, uh, then we should really question whether or not we are actually Christians or if we're just making stuff up. Um, in In addition to these four things, we hear a few other activities of the early Christian church. They uh, marveled at the miracles that the apostles performed. They shared their possessions with one another and even sold property in order to provide for those who had need. Uh, Every day they would gather in the temple uh, together. They would eat together and they would praise God. Uh, And God was daily adding to their number. Here too we find another good example for Christians. While uh, we, we do not have a promise that we will be able to do miracles today like the apostles did back then, we can certainly Learn to be generous. We can certainly uh, share our possessions with other people. We can certainly give to those in need, and we should be doing those things. Uh, We can gather with our fellow Christians, and we can eat with them, praising God. Once again, these are all things uh, that the church should continue to be doing in our day. Back in Acts, one day, uh, Peter and John were going to the temple to pray when they saw a man who was lame from birth. Peter healed him, and the gathered crowds gave Peter yet another opportunity to preach. Once again, uh, today, Helping those in need is one of the best ways to gain an audience in order to share the gospel. Peter preached again, uh, calling out his fellow Jews for putting Jesus to death and calling them to repentance and faith in Christ, faith in Jesus. The priests, uh, the captain of the guard and the Sadducees, uh, the Sadducees is another Jewish group, sort of like the Pharisees, um, but these guys, the, whereas the Pharisees mostly had power in kind of the rural areas in the synagogues, uh, the Sadducees were more upper class leaders who were in charge at the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, so this group of people, um, uh, the uh, excuse me, going back here, uh, the the priests that I mentioned, the captain of the guard, and the Sadducees, uh, these people, uh, they were disturbed by Peter's preaching. They uh, went and arrested both Peter and John. They put him in jail till the next morning, uh, but. Many people did believe from Peter's message. When the leaders questioned Peter, uh, he continued uh, his preaching. And even uh, though these leaders had rejected it, Jesus, uh, God had made Jesus uh, the whole point of what he was doing in the world. Peter told the leaders there, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This, uh, the, the leaders then at this time, They were shocked by the courage of John and Peter because they noticed that uh, John and Peter, these were unschooled, ordinary men. You wouldn't expect them to be able to speak all that well. Uh, And they noted that these men had been with Jesus. They were not sure how to proceed, uh, how to respond to them, especially because uh, they had some pretty good evidence on their side with that lame guy walking around now uh, that Peter had just healed. Um, And so they simply ordered Peter and John to stop speaking in Jesus' name. Uh, But... Peter and John insisted that they had to obey God rather than people. So they're going to continue their preaching. Well, after further threats, uh, eventually the leaders let them go. Meanwhile, the apostles continued preaching and performing miracles. The uh, Christians continued growing together, uh, continued giving generously uh, to one another, and the leaders continued growing more and more frustrated with all of this. Finally, the leaders arrested the apostles and put them in jail. But during the night, an angel Uh, set the apostles free and told them to go on back into the temple courts and continue their preaching. (laughs) So the next day, the leaders found the jail empty and the apostles right back uh, at their uh, talking about Jesus. Uh, No matter what they commanded or threatened, the apostles insisted that they had to obey God rather than human beings. One of the uh, Pharisees spoke up at this point and he said that there was another man who had started a movement similar to what Jesus was doing or what Jesus had done. Uh, But that man died, and after his death, his movement died out with him. Therefore, he told the leaders to just leave the disciples alone because either the movement would die out with Jesus gone, or if it really was from God, uh, it would keep on going no matter what they did, and they would find themselves fighting against God himself. Very interesting point he makes there, right? Uh, The leaders, they had the apostles flogged, uh, and then they let them go. But the apostles left their... uh, left their punishment, praising God that they were counted worthy of suffering for the name of Jesus. They considered it an honor. 
Very interesting uh, way of thinking. Uh, it's a valuable uh, way for us to think when we have to suffer for following Christ. Meanwhile, the church continued to grow by leaps and bounds, and it was becoming a, a logistical nightmare <laughs> to make sure everyone was taken care of. Uh, certain groups were being overlooked as they uh, distributed food to the for, poor, for example. Uh, and the church decided then to appoint seven deacons uh, who would be able to take charge of this charity work so that the apostles could instead uh, focus their full attention on preaching the gospel instead of having to uh, continue this work as well. Here again, we see the value in the church uh, for today uh, to distribute workloads so that all the work in our congregations uh, does not rest on just a few people doing, uh, doing everything. Uh, one of these uh, men, one of these deacons, was a man named Stephen. As uh, the leader's hatred for Christians grew, they ended up seize seizing Stephen, and they accused him of blasphemy and many other things. Stephen spoke to them about Israel's history, and he pointed out in a rather long speech, he pointed out uh, how the people of God, the Israelites, regularly rejected God and rejected what God was doing among them. Uh, and that this is what the leaders were doing right now. The leaders covered their ears at this and screamed so they didn't have to hear what he said, and they began picking up stones to stone him to death. As Stephen died at their hands, uh, his prayer echoes the prayers of Jesus on the cross. He says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he says, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Quite fascinating. Well, Stephen's death had now opened the floodgates. The Jewish leaders had now fully embraced violence as a way to stamp out Christianity. Many of the Christians fled from Jerusalem and ended up uh, in all, different, all kinds of different places. And wherever they uh, went, they brought the gospel message with them. Here again, we see God used something as evil as persecution against Christians for good. Uh, the spreading of the gospel throughout the world. And this continues to happen throughout church history. There was a, a certain uh, Pharisee named Saul, uh, and he was actually uh, there at Stephen's death. He was happy to see Stephen dead. Um, and he was particularly passionate about persecuting Christians. He zealously sought out uh, Christians wherever he could. He arrested them, and then he saw that they also were put to death for the crime of blasphemy. He was so committed to getting rid of Jesus that he got uh, authorization to travel to a new city, Damascus, to weed out any Christianity that might be there. But on the way, uh, Jesus confronted Saul. Saul, this is interesting, Saul believed that he was serving God by killing Christians. Right? He thought this is what he ought to do as a, as a faithful Jew. Uh, and suddenly now, as Jesus confronts him, he realized that his best effort, efforts at doing the right thing had only made him that much more evil, that much more offensive to the holy God that he was trying to serve. Here, Paul's sincerity is irrelevant. <laughs> he was sincerely evil. Paul's life is a warning for all of us. Even our best efforts at morality are offensive to God. Isaiah wrote, long before this part of the history, uh, that our righteous acts are filthy rags in God's sight. This is why all people need to repent and have faith in Jesus. There, we often think that it's, it's just the really bad people or the people I personally consider bad who need to repent. No, I do. You do as well. Every single one of us needs repentance and faith in Jesus. We cannot even begin to serve God without Jesus. We also find this interesting point in here. Um, Paul was not in any position to make a choice for Jesus. Paul was 100% opposed to Christ. But God converted him anyway. Once again, uh, you can't make a choice for Jesus. God must work in us what is pleasing in his sight. You and I cannot do it ourselves. Jesus told Paul that uh, he would now spread the very faith that he had worked so hard to destroy. It was a rocky start because the Christians uh, were understandably uh, hesitant <laughs> to accept Paul, whom they had heard about, who they had heard about his violence against Christians, and now here they were supposed to... Uh, accept Paul and welcome him as a Christian. Uh, but uh, Paul began uh, quickly preaching the gospel himself right there in Damascus. And he, was, he would argue with the Jews to prove that Jesus was truly the Christ. Well, after a while, uh, the Christians did uh, receive him and uh, the Jews ended up so fed up with Paul uh, that they wanted him dead. The man who uh, had worked to kill Christians was now under threat of death because of his own Christianity. Quite fascinating. Incredible. 
uh, how God works in our world. Uh, Paul escaped Damascus and he returned to Jerusalem where the Christians slowly learned what God was doing through this once violent enemy of God. Well, up to this point, Christianity had mostly spread only among ethnic Jews. They were, after all, the ones uh, front in the front seat to hear and recognize God's Messiah. Furthermore, uh, many of the ancient Israelite laws and customs uh, were to keep the Jews separate from the Gentiles. Remember that word of Gentiles? Uh, the, in this case, it simply means uh, the nations, uh, but more accurately, it means non-Jews, uh, so people who do not have that ethnic background. Um, so it's the Jews and the rest of us is kind of what the, the word Gentiles means. But God was about to radically change the racial dynamic of the church. Uh, you see, there was this Roman centurion who believed in God, um, and his name was Cornelius. And though he's not a Jew, he is faithful to the one true God. Well, an angel came to Cornelius and told him to bring Peter to his home. As Cornelius' men uh, traveled to get Peter, Peter received a vision from God. Three times, God put a... Uh, uncle or a, a blanket in front of Peter with unclean animals in it, and Peter was told to kill and eat. But Peter, as a faithful Jew, would never eat unclean foods, uh, but God told him not to call anything impure that God had made clean. While Peter was trying to make sense of all this, Cornelius' men arrived and went with him, uh, and he went with them to uh, Cornelius' house. And when Peter arrived at Cornelius' house, he realized what God was telling him with that vision. He realized God does not show favoritism just because of who your parents were. The gospel, Peter realized, was not only for Jews, but it was for the rest of the nations of the world also. As Peter spoke the gospel to them, these Gentiles also received the gift of the Holy Spirit and were baptized. And from this moment on, the Christians began spreading the gospel message to all people regardless of their race and ethnicity. This started the uh, early missionary efforts of the early Christian church that began spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth just as Jesus commanded us. And this is the beginning of what we see today, where Christianity is the only true world religion. All other major religions remain largely where they ethnically started. But Christianity is the one religion that can be for all people because it is by faith and not by works. It is by Christ and not by us. Amen. And I say, I say, I say, it can't be that easy. And he said, he said, and no, it wasn't easy. But be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God.